Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is Ixion, a game that I've been beta testing over the last few weeks and the devs have been kind enough to give me early access to a copy. Now this is not a sponsored video or anything, but I have been testing this in the background and I've had my eye on it ever since the Steam Next Fest. It was up for a demo there and it did subsequently become the most wishlist game during that demo fest. Now the footage you're going to see is from my beta test itself and not the full release, which isn't in early access I might add, but I didn't experience any bugs and pretty much the experience you see here will be the same experience you get. The developers have described themselves as being inspired by games like Frostpunk and Banished. And before we jump into the game, I'm just going to show you the intro. And in this first episode, we're going to go through the prologue and go over some of the UI and things that you can expect from the gameplay. So without further ado, let's jump into Ixion. Welcome to the Tycoon, and before we jump into it, we're just going to hear from Eden, the ship's computer. Shuttle EMV Sharon is now docked. Sector 1 empowered and pressurized. One sheet decontamination protocol online. Disembarkation authorized. Message to crew members. Welcome on board the Tycoon. Property of Dolus Aerospace Engineering Corporation. You will soon be given your assignments, but until then, please continue to wait near the docking bay. We hope you have a productive voyage, and would like to thank you for your contribution towards humanity's future. Administrator, I am Eden, the personal assistant installed on board the Tycoon. In accordance with the Munchie Protocol, 
I have been designed to take into consideration your complete psychological profile so that I may more accurately respond to any needs you may have. My primary purpose is to ensure the Tycoon's automated systems function efficiently. I will keep track of the tasks that are necessary for you to fulfill your prerogative of reaching Proxima Centauri and carrying out field research, mining operations, manufacturing protocols, and Dolo's colonization tests. So that's Eden and she's basically explained our main objective and why we're here in the first place. So before we jump into all of that stuff, let me show you around. All of this stuff that is spread out on the ship's floor here is just resources. I need to stick all of this stuff away and tidy up this section of the ship. We actually have six sections to this ship and it goes round in a circle. As you can see, we've only got one section open to us at the moment, but as time goes on, we will expand on the ship. The ship itself, this is the exterior view, and we will be making expansions on the exterior as well. I'm just gonna get rid of these tutorial bits here because I'll go over all of that stuff for you. We've also got our solar system view here, and eventually we will be doing expeditions in space. We'll be doing some mining and gathering resources and things to bring back to the ship. Now, next off, we're gonna hear from Giovanni. He's a bit of an annoying character. He's always munching apples in your ear roll. So I'm just gonna let this next transmission come in before we jump into some building. Administrator, I wanted to introduce you to your first tasks personally. I'm Dolose's cryonics lead, Marduk council member, Giovanni Batista. So, let's see. Your first objective will be to begin setting up essential infrastructure aboard the Tycoon, meeting the environmental conditions that are required to support your crew. Having laid these foundations, you will then oversee the installation of the Vol engine and perform a short test jump to Proxima Centauri. Upon arrival, your research teams will carry out a brief survey of local space, gather a few rock and coal dust samples, fire up the colonization protocol, begin building the foundations for mankind's future, yada, yada, yada. And then you'll come back. Now, in order to achieve this, you'll need to familiarize yourself with the Tycoon's core functions. It's no big deal. There's the production, stockpiling and distribution of resources, construction, balancing of power output with allocation. Oh, and space exploration, you know, setting out expeditions and all that. Basically, everything needed to establish scientific advancement and harmonious autonomy on board the Tycoon following the first test of its Vol engine. Eden's gonna display and keep track of your main objectives. Oh, and Administrator, don't let the position go to your head. Veneer has insisted to center Dolos's focus on the Tycoon, but this mission is just in preparation for our next project, the Protagoras. The Marduk Council worked damn hard to pull this mission together ahead of schedule. So, toe the line, do as you're told, and bring the Tycoon back in one piece. Leave the grand gestures and saving of mankind from ecosystemic destruction to us, okay? One last word of advice. We don't all think like Veneer Dolos. As of yet, no human law has been officially established amongst the stars. That sounds like an opportunity knocking to me. Okay, well, that's Giovanni, and just inside here we've got our build menu. So we've got a stockpile and we've got our constructor or workshop, rather, both of them requiring two power. And these two buildings are free, so I'm just going to put them down first. First of all, I'm putting down my constructor, I'm just building a little bit of a road, and I need to connect all of these roads up together so we can eventually put all of this stuff away. So let's just connect these up here. Now all of this stuff is just temporary. I need to have some roads connected so we can actually get all of this stuff put away. And if we just zoom in here, you can see our little robot constructor just going out and placing roads down. Now it doesn't actually cost any money to stick roads down, so fortunately we're not wasting any resources and I will pull of this, this stuff down eventually. So we've got that in the middle of the way there. I'm just going to put a road along the back and we need to put down 
our stockpile as well. Now, I'm actually going to put quite a few of these stockpiles down at the back because we're going to need them. And uh, as soon as I can put them down, I will. So we'll assign steel to go away in this one. I happen to know that we've got quite a bit of steel here. And now that the road's going past, we can put that away. So you see these little red trucks will come out and that will put all of the steel and alloy away. And in anticipation, I'm going to put a road down the back here because all of them sections here will lead into the other sections of the ship. So I'm going to need something along that back road there. Okay, I can complete this road now. We've put that steel away and I'm going to place down a load more of our stockpiles. So each stockpile requires three power and steel to construct. As you can see in the middle we've got 41 power on this ship and uh, we're certainly going to need more than that. So let's let our crew get on with that and I'm just going to click on all of these resources and get all of that stuff put away. Like so. There we go. Now we've got quite a bit of steel on the ship. I'll set this one for steel. This one for steel. We'll have a little bit of food and a little bit of polymer on the ship as well. I'm just going to put a road temporarily just here so it can reach that. And there's just a little section just here that it can't reach as well. Okay, so we've got a message from Emma just come in. Let's check that one out. Administrator, Mr. Dolos has made it abundantly clear when it comes to security. Given the importance of the tycoon, we must have full control over what is happening inside the station. My name is Emma Klein, Dolos's lead data scientist and member of the Marduk Council. My department have just completed final synchronization between Eden and our data treatment tool, the DLS. The DLS, or Data Listening System, is capable of scanning, recording, and parsing exchanges of any kind. The DLS programming that is a part of Eden will filter all data collected and bring to your attention only the most relevant information. It will also provide you with a condensed overview of any situations that may arise and formulate potential future outcomes. It will permit you to give direct orders without having to go through additional unnecessary paperwork. Eden will then take care of everything via their DLS accreditation. As is often the case with tools produced by my department, I think you'll find that once you start using the DLS, you'll never be able to do without it. Oh, and before I let you go ahead and start writing history, Dr. Munshi, our lead medical expert, wanted me to bring to your attention a possible side effect of vol jumping. Whilst there is a correlation between prolonged space travel and the development of early onset dementia, he believes that a vol jump has the potential to accelerate this process, although this is yet to be proven. His recommendation is for you to immediately send any crew members that are exhibiting uncharacteristic or symptomatic behavior to an infirmary, as these facilities are equipped to treat the mind as well as the body. Remember that all of your actions and choices are being reported by Eden. We are not affiliated with any national or even international organization. The only people that you are answerable to are those of us who sit on the Marduk Council, who represent the collective interests and ambitions of the company. Okay, so our little constructor here is just busy getting the stockpiles together. We only have one constructor building and it will eventually get rid of all of this stuff. Let's just click polymer. So I've got a couple of piles of polymer that we can stick away. And as the constructor comes out here, it's going to find a little bit of food, but it's mainly steel that we've got. Let's just check out on this building here. So the Tarquin crew members are currently unable to access food supplies. So they're going to request that we need to put down a mess hall. So we can certainly do that. No problem at all. So the crew is going to need somewhere to stay so we're going to need to build them buildings but of course eating is going to be a priority so let's just come over to food and mess hall we get a free one of those so now space management is very important we don't get much to work with so 
we want to try and fit these in and save as much space as we can. Now I could put that up the top. I'm kind of feeling that we could put some buildings at the top and have this kind of in the middle of them rather than putting it in the very top. I think where you place things is going to be slightly important and I do like to keep my areas tidy so I'm going to put in some housing first or just check the size and it looks like they're three wide so I don't need that road just there though I do need it going through that door so let's just move that up one like that that way I can get a couple of houses in at the top and we'll put the mess hall down one down lower then it kind of sits between our housing arrangement I think I'm going to put all of the housing and quarters just in this top corner here and we can put a road going up there we can fit a couple up the top that's all good now that road's being constructed we can get rid of some more steel let's just open up that stockpile for food which is this one just here and when that gets put away and the mess hall is built our crew members will have somewhere to eat but yeah just at the beginning we just need to get all of this stuff put away and then I can delete all of these roads okay slowly but surely things are opening up and let's tell us what's in these packages here um, so we've got steel polymer, could probably do with another stockpile. Do like to keep everything as organised as possible with this stuff. Okay. So our constructor's now going to get on with the mess building. It's just finishing off these roads. And... The crew is pretty busy putting all of this stuff away. That'll make some space for us. So we'll let it get on with all of that stuff before we build something else. So our mess hall is built and we've got a message coming in here from Henry. Bonjour, administrator. What a wonderful day to embrace our fate, don't you think? I'm Henri Barjaville, writer, philosopher, lobbyist, but most of all, member of the Marduk Council. I have taken the liberty of personally arranging an exchange out of courtesy with the Oshanabi, a ship in high orbit belonging to one of our commercial allies, the Ashtangites. Even so, they are a small organization. The Ashtangites are important partners who share the same pragmatic, moralistic, and spiritual outlook as we do. The Ushanabi will provide us with a source of food while carrying out the Tycoon's initial testing. By making it the first exclusive trade partner of the Tycoon, we will demonstrate to our long-term allies that Dolos wishes for them to share in our successes. Please assign a cargo ship so that we can check the trade routines. Administrator, trust in genetic connectors. Self-similar space will reveal the pattern. Okay, so the Orshabi is a ship that's just orbiting outside of planet Earth and it's going to supply us with food and more crew members just in this beginning phase while we're getting set up here. So we don't need to worry about food too much at the moment. But I think I will put down another stockpile because we're running out of space. Let's just check out what the crew want here. So they're lacking crew quarters and I'm going to ensure that they all have a crew quarter within 12 cycles and I believe that means 12 rotations of the ship in terms of how time is managed here so there we go we've got all of these resources here going into the mess hall it's just carrying some food and wants us to construct some crew quarters so we've got 85 crew on board currently each one of these buildings holds 15, so if I get six buildings down, I'll we'll have enough space for 90 crew members just to begin with. And that'll help get rid of some of that steel as well. We'll be able to get some more of that packed away. 
Okay, that's all good. And I think we'll just do not the docking bay. I'm just gonna get one more stockpile down. Where are we? Uh, there we go. Maintenance stockpile. We can fit one more in along the top here. And I should be able to get the rest of this steel packed away when that's constructed. So our little constructor here is just on with the crew's quarters. And you can really zoom in on all of this stuff, watch it all getting built up as well. We currently only have that one constructor, but it's pretty much all you need in each section of the ship. Just the one I found generally enough. So I can delete this road here. Now roads, they don't actually cost you any resources to make and I put these down just so we could reach all of this stuff that's kind of laying around the ship here. And it will get used up. Okay, so now you can see we're on to 20 power. Power is definitely going to become a problem pretty soon, but we'll be able to solve that. Let's just get rid of that message. First things first, we need to get all of these quarters constructed. So let's wait for all of that to get built. And as you can see, they, they keep on bringing all of this stuff back to the stockpile as well. Okay, so that's the last of the crew quarters that have just been built. And our constructors just going off to build that other stockpile. So the All Shabby required that we build ourselves a cargo ship. And we're also going to need a science ship. So I'm actually going to just assign these all to be built. Each one requires 20 polymer. So let's get the science ship. And I may as well build the mining ship as well. So we have that when we are ready to start mining in space. So there we go. There goes our workers bringing in the polymer and we'll get them three ships crafted and the constructors just putting together our last stockpile so I'll just assign this to steel and we'll get the rest of this stuff all put away and then I can get rid of that road so here we go it's just gonna construct our first ship and this will be our transport vehicle. Once we've got that, we'll be able to bring in food and crew members from the Or Shabi, which is a ship that's just orbiting planet Earth. So everything's looking quite compact and nice at the moment. We'll just let them ships craft and then we'll get on with our first mission. Okay, so that's our cargo ship has been constructed, so we can assign that to go and gather our resources. This is how we're going to be able to transport all of the resources. So currently, we've got 12 food waiting for us at the Or Shabby, so I don't really need to assign anything else to that. Although, because we only have one ship, we may as well just tick all of these boxes, but... This is kind of a useful management tool here, very similar to RimWorld, you can prioritise what you're carrying and as you can see there we've got the All Shabby just here and that currently is where we're getting our food from and extra staff members. So we're just waiting for our science ship and our mining ship to get crafted and we can get stuck into some of these missions. Okay, that's our last ship constructed at the docking bay, so we can now send our science ship out on an expedition. So if we just come out into our solar system view here, you can see we've got a few magnifying glasses. One of them's just over the moon. We've got our mining ship and our cargo ship there constructed. So we're just going to send our science ship out just to investigate the moon and hopefully they'll shift all of these resources away. So that's our next mission is the space expedition. So let's send our science vessel out towards the moon, see what's going on over here. It won't take them very long to get here at all. As you can see, we're pretty close to it. And can speed it up, but we're right next to it. The science ship has arrived at its destination. 
Okay, so we've got a couple of options here. We've got this moon base and we can exploit a security vulnerability or just go straight in to dismantle the base. But we're going to take this extra one cycle just to exploit the security vulnerability because that won't take very long at all. We'll just let that tick down. As you can see, the bar is filling up and I'll just speed it up just so we can go through that one. And then we can carry on to dismantle the base. So we've just managed to get an extra 10 science. Now science is what we need to be able to spend to get upgrades. So let's just, now we've done that, we can dismantle the base and get a bit more science back. And we'll just leave our science vessel to carry on with that. So now... We are getting low on power, but there's nothing I can do about that at the moment. I think we will go and we will stick the... We could stick some more crew quarters down here. And... Even though we don't need them at the moment, we are going to get more crew on board. So we may as well prepare for that. And I do intend to put all of the crew quarters on this side of the ship. And I guess we could build a medical facility as well. We are going to need that. And just making a few more buildings will help get rid of some of this steel that's in the way as well. So there goes the second one. Our constructor's just finishing off that road there. Okay, how's our science ship doing? Okay. It's all finished. Now it's grabbing the science. As you can see, it's just ticking down and ready for extraction. So we're getting 30 steel for deconstructing that base as well as the science. And as you can see, our little cargo ship is just heading on out to the moon and we've assigned it to grab everything. So that's just going to automatically bring resources back to the ship. So that moon base that we're deconstructing given us some extra science so I need to get that tech lab down and as soon as I do that we are going to actually run out of power so I'm going to put the infirmary down we are going to need one that requires five workers and three power and I guess we can sort of stick it in here just break our buildings up a little bit. Let's bring that road around there like so. I guess we can bring that a little bit further down. Eventually I'm going to stick some more staff quarters in there. So I guess we can bring that down to here. Have it go around the outside like so. Now. We should have enough space to be able to stick the rest of this steel away. We have our cargo ship bringing more steel back, so slowly but surely it is getting unloaded. There we go. Now, just allowing that science ship to collect all of the points out in space. And where are we? I guess we can put a couple more sets of crew quarters down in that bottom corner. That'll bring all of that steel down here and then I can eventually delete that road. And then when I delete that road I can put my tech lab down. How are we doing? So we've got 30 left and then we can pull our science ship on to somewhere else. Okay. Hopefully, with building them two extra buildings, I can get rid of the rest of these resource piles. I just want to delete that road. There we go, there goes one. And... I don't know if we're going to get the rest of it put away just yet. Doesn't matter. Down to six power, so I really do need to get that tech lab built as soon as possible. And it is our next mission. 
How are we doing? So the science ship has completed its task. It looks like we've got a mission or an event over at Saturn. There's something also going on at Mars. So I guess we'll send our science ship on to Saturn. It's going to take a little bit longer to get there. And I guess for the time being, I can delete that road. Build something else going straight up in this direction. Just for the time being, we can get rid of this here. So the tech lab is a rather large building. And you don't get much space in each one of these sections. So I feel that a big part of this game is managing your space wisely. So the tech lab, there we go. I think that'll fit in quite nicely somewhere around there. We'll just flip it round and stick it down. Now, as soon as this is constructed, we're going to have a blackout because that requires 12 power. We only have five left, but that's fine. As soon as it's built, I can switch off some of them stockpiles, deactivate them and um, just temporarily until we've researched how to get more power. So it's taken 90 steel to be able to build all of this. So they're bringing all of that steel in and that's going to allow us to get rid of that, just that bit there. A science ship has arrived at its destination. Okay, so the science ship has arrived at Saturn. Let's see what's going on here. Um, okay, so before this EKP system falls into Saturn's atmosphere, I'm going to send a team out to investigate. I'm going to take three cycles to see what happens with that. And I can finally get rid of this road. delete this here like so. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with how the space is being managed this time round. So I have played through this quite a few times now, certainly this intro part and beyond and I already had a good idea of where I wanted to place everything so our tech lab is currently getting built. Now as soon as that is built it is going to knock out the power well, that's fine. I can just temporarily turn off some of these stockpiles. Make sure we keep the food going, but some of these stockpiles are pretty full. But we will end up using all of that steel up. It's just at the beginning of the game, we need to be able to get self-sufficient. So at the moment, we're not even able to make our own food. So there's all th these things that we need to research before we can make the jump and uh, head out to Alpha Centauri. So it's almost ready. Let's just come back when our tech lab has been put together. Okay, so the tech lab's about to go up, which means the power's about to go off. There we go. We're on a Dr. Okay, Dr. Munchy wants to speak to us. Just going to deactivate some of these cargo bays. At least some of the ones that are holding onto the steel at the moment. So that's three, six. Uh, going to need one more. There we go. Managed to get power back on. Let's hear the next transmission. Due to insufficient levels of electricity generation. Yep, thanks Eden. We've already taken care of that. Stanford routines recommend that you construct an external solar panel to boost overall electrical output. We're definitely gonna get on with that. Let's see what they want with the docking bay. They're requesting additional staff because they're overworked, so we can certainly do that. Send out a request for more people. We already have the crew quarters ready for them when they arrive. And let's check out what Dr. Munchie wants to tell us. Greetings, Administrator. I'm Dr. Abhinav Munchi, Tolo's expert in compartmentalism and medicine, and a member of the Marduk Council. 
I'm glad to finally meet you, even in this digital manner. Your psychological test results were quite impressive. My friend and colleague, Philip Stanford, couldn't be here today. So I will take the role of introducing you to the final stages of the whole engine integration. Before we get into that, however, we would like you to complete the testing station's exploration and enhancement capabilities. You'll then be able to begin researching the EVA airlock and assess its compatibility with the Tycoon's core systems. I hope that the work of our team will ensure that you are equipped to deal with most situations you encounter up there. Before I leave you, Stanford would like me to remind you that space is a far less fanciful and forgiving environment than science fiction would have us believe. It would be wise to remember that. Okay, our cargo ship's just gone out to bring back some more stuff. We already have the crew quarters available, so they're coming back. Now we can go into research. The first thing I want to get running is the EVA airlock. Once we construct that, we can get to the external part of the ship. And to construct that, it's going to cost us 30 science points. So, as you can see, the science is now ticking down. And that'll take a little while. Once we can put an EVA airlock down, we can get to the external part of the ship. How's our science team doing? Um, I've already sent them out to investigate. I don't know what went wrong there. Okay, well, must have missed our opportunity. We'll press that again. Must have missed it. Um, okay, so we're really just waiting to research the EVA airlock. So 25% in. As soon as I can stick that down, we can get some more solar panels put on the outside of our ship. Okay, the airlock is now ready, so let's place that down. And I guess I could place it somewhere around here. It has to go on the outside, and I've covered the top position, so we're going to have to put this along the bottom somewhere. Do I put it at this end, or... Hmm... I think I'll put it underneath the tech lab. Yeah, just down here. So once that's constructed, we're going to be able to build stuff on the outside of the ship. And I guess we can delete that top road. Okay, that's the science ship over at Saturn. Just put this road down. Have it come along here. And then that can get built. And stretch a road along here as well. We're going to need that later on. Okay, what did they discover at Saturn? Um, stripped it down and received some schematics. So we got a little bit of science back from that mission. We'll just collect that. And then we can head on and see what is going on at Mars. I'll just speed that up for a second so we can collect all the science before we leave. And we'll send this ship onto Mars, which is quite a journey. That's going to take a little bit of time to get there. How are we doing with our airlock? They're bringing in all of the steel to be able to construct it. And... Once I've got some solar panels down and some more power, I'll be able to switch all of them cargo bays back on. So our little constructor's just finishing off that part of the road. And then it will come out and do our EVA airlock. Go. Just need to get to 90. So when that's constructed, we can build some solar panels on the outside of the ship. Okay, that's our airlock complete, and it's just sent the power off. I'm going to need access to this steel, really. Um, I can switch one of them off. I think for the time being, I'm just going to have to switch off. I can switch off the polymer. Is that enough? No. Um, we'll switch the medical center off, and I still can't switch it back on. Yeah, I'm going to have to switch off the tech lab just for a moment. I can switch these back on though. That leaves us two power. And we'll just go onto the outside of the ship and get some solar panels put in. 
and we can boost the ship's power. So this is the menu for the outside construction and I'm just going to put some small solar panels down that cost 10 polymer and it will give us an extra 40 power which is more than enough for everything we need so let's just speed that up okay our science ship has arrived at Mars let's check out what's going on over here okay so the facility on Mars is lacking materials required for a crucial repair so we can send out some resources we can either send 10 steel 10 polymer or 20 steel I'm gonna send 20 steel out to help them out we could refuse to help them but we'll get some science back for doing this and I do have plenty of steel so we'll let our cargo ship go out and drop off 20 steel for the UN and we should see that we'll get loaded up here as you can see our crew is just bringing that over to the docking bay as soon as we've got 20 steel our cargo ship will automatically go out because we've assigned it to go out automatically and that will eventually get to Mars and we'll get a little bit of science back from that so there we go that's the last one and our cargo ship is just going to get released from the docking bay that will head on out to Mars okay our solar panels are almost completed as well, so we'll be able to switch the tech lab back on. Just zoom in here, we'll be able to see our cargo ship. There we go, it's just plotted a route. That's just heading on out to Mars. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, so we got 42 power, so we can switch this back on. And we can switch the medical systems back on, and we can put both of these back on as well leaves us 21 power and we can start researching something else next I guess we can get on with the probe launcher or the insect farm I think we'll do the insect farm next we want to become self-sufficient and start making our own food so it looks like insects for the crew very nice very Bill Gates <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, that's another story. Um, so we'll just research the insect farm. So we're at 98 crew. Housing, we've got enough for 105. So we are going to need some more housing. Stick. Stick some down here. Yes, we can get a three in a line just down there. Yeah, that'll be... That'll, that'll do nicely. Just anticipating for when more crew comes on board. And... How's our cargo ship doing? It's about to arrive at Mars. And with that, the UN should be able to repair. Okay, so we've completed the task. And there we go. We get 20 polymer back for that. Now, our cargo ship, even though it's coming away from Mars, it's automatically gone on to the Ushabi. It's going to gather some steel and some food by the looks of it so we'll let it carry on with that and I guess we'll bring our science ship in back to Earth's atmosphere looks like food is currently a problem we're out of food so it's just done that priority uh, we did get 20 polymer back so we can upgrade our solar panels so I'll may as well get on with building that we're gonna need more power always need more power speed things up 
and looks like we've managed to research the insect farms. So what we got here, insect farms. So put them down along the front here, and I think I'm going to put say about four of these in. We'll have this section of the ship a place that produces a lot of the food for the rest of the ship. At the moment we won't need that many but moving forward we will need to produce all of our food so we may as well make a start on that. Um, just bring the road down here like so, bring it up to connect there. Save as much space as we can. Each one of them insect farms produces one food per cycle and that should be more than enough to keep our crew going. The cargo ship has arrived with some more crew and a little bit of steel. That's all getting put away. Or was it actually, it was actually food and steel that it went to collect but now it's going back to Mars to collect that polymer. And I guess we could put a road coming straight up here. Saves all of our crew members going right round the outside. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with how that's all looking so far. How are we doing? Now, for medium solar panels, we need a computer chip and 45 polymer, so we can't put that down, but we can, on section 2, stick another small solar panel in. We do have 10 polymer left. Um, I'll just hold off doing that. That being said, our cargo ship has gone out to Mars to go and grab another 20 polymer, so we could use that. We don't have any factories to be able to produce polymer at the moment. Um, okay. Yeah, that's just let all of that get built up first. Let our insect farms start working. Tech wise, um, we can get on with the probe launcher. That costs 30 science. That's pretty much the last thing we need to research for the time being. We've got enough science to be able to do that, so. May as well get the probe launcher researched and built and we'll just let them all finish all of this stuff off. There they are, just working on the insect farms. Yummy. <laughs> okay, research has been completed on the probe. So we can now construct that as well. Uh, the probe launcher. So I think we'll just shove that just here, right next to our insect farms. And I guess we'll build a road coming down this way, going around the outside here. Like I say, just trying to manage as much space as I can. Just bringing out all of the steel to get that constructed. The probe launcher can go and investigate parts of space, investigate asteroids, and we'll see how that works. Technology wise, we could begin work researching battery power. We do only have 20 science at the moment, so we can't fully research it, but I guess we can begin the research on it. We will need battery power at some point. Okay. That's about as much as we can do at the moment. The one remaining thing we have to do is construct the Vol engine, which is going to allow us to jump into hyperspace. Before we do that, get all of this constructed. Okay, so that's the probe launcher is ready. Now, we could construct a probe. I think it costs three polymer per probe. We've got 30 polymer. So, I guess, before we construct the Vol engine, can we put some more solar panels down? I think I'd rather get some more solar panels down on section 2 
before we can strap the vol engine. So that that just requires a hundred steel for the vol engine. So the solar panels that requires polymer. So let's just get an extra forty electric. Use up some of that polymer. And that does leave us enough to make a probe. Could just get one constructed and ready to go out. So let's just, yeah, let's just construct one ready for when we need to send out a probe into deep space. And resource wise, once we've built the Vol engine, we're going to be getting pretty low on steel and everything that we kind of need. Let's let that all get constructed and once the Vol engine is constructed, we can head on and run our first test. Well, I guess there is one last thing we can do. We could put an upgrade to our solar panels on section 2. We have got, f that'll cost 15 polymer, It'll give us an extra 40 electric, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. We may as well before we make the jump. It's only something we're going to have to do later on. That does put us pretty low on resources, so let's speed all of that up, get that done. Once the Vol engine has been constructed, we can make that jump. Okay, our insect farm is all working. Working conditions, we need some more crew members. But I think we can let them go ahead and construct the Vol engine now. So yeah, let's just get on with that. Where are we? Engines and external systems. Vol engine, it's going to cost us 100 steel. It's not going to leave us with much, but it has to be done. In fact, we're going to be left with 13 steel. Not much at all. But we're about as ready as we can be to make our first jump. So as soon as that's constructed, we can move on, do our first hyperspace jump. Okay, we've got an incoming transmission. Administrator, because of your continued successful management of the Tycoon, Dolos have authorized the dispatch of new crew members and food supplies. Please ensure that they have suitable accommodation once you reach Proxima Centauri. Okay, we're getting some more crew members and a little bit more food supplies. So... Our cargo ship's just going to head on out automatically to bring all of them back to the ship. There we go. And it'd be nice if it brought a little bit more steel. I'm alright for food. <laughs> the Vol engine has now been constructed, so we'll just take this incoming transmission. Different phases of preparation, calibration, and verification were successfully completed. You must now start the full bonding procedure. Dolo's protocols now deem you competent to gather resources, knowledge, and test colonization routines once you reach Proxima Centauri. Before you do so, Vanir Dolos, Marduk Council Founder and Dolos CEO, wants to talk to you. Okay, so the big boss wants to speak to us. It looks like we've got three of our crewmates homeless, so I do need to construct at least one more building. But where should we put them in? Another section. Um, I've only really got enough to build the one. Do I put it up in the top corner? Decisions, decisions. It's all about space management. Um, got no more space down there. Guess. 
Yeah. Stick them here. Let's build a road coming up here. I think our cargo ship is coming back with a little bit more steel. Hello, Administrator. I'm glad to see that you have managed to complete your assignments in preparation for this unique moment in history. You must understand that this is not simply another chapter in humanity's story. The book of our life on Earth is over, and we stand now at its epilogue. It saddens me to think that there are many who have yet to comprehend the reality of our situation. We've endured endless cycles of war, crisis, and famine. Still, the worst is yet to come. There are others, like Dolos, who have prepared for this outcome, but most of our kind remain sheltered from the horror of the predicament we find ourselves in. This pale ghost of civilization will wither and die, and with it, the tenets and values of the past. As we prepare to leave this system for the first time, perhaps we must decide which fragments we will pick up and take forward with us. Through Dolos, I am offering mankind an alternative means of survival. The tycoon is a tablet upon which we will carve our new history. Do you recognize why I have done all of this? Having foreseen our fate, I became fixated on altering it. I set about fashioning the ropes and tying the knots that would bind together this magnificent ship. It is true that our time in this world is brief, but at least I can rest assured knowing that my legacy will endure for eons. Farewell, Administrator. For the few who stand in the light and the many who dwell in the dark, you carry the fate of us all. God, he's a pretty depressing, fatalistic guy, isn't he, the boss? But... There you have it, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. We didn't have enough steel to finish off the crew quarters here, but we will get them finished. And for the time being, I've got enough to house everybody. So this is pretty much the intro and the basic tutorial, just getting used to all of the UI and the mechanics. And I will be continuing with this challenge in tomorrow's episode. We'll see what happens next. So I'm just going to move the Tarquin towards its launch destination. They want us to head out towards the moon. And it doesn't move particularly fast. As soon as we get there, we'll play the outro. And, uh, well, you can see how basically the game is going to begin. But uh, that is Exion, the game that I've been pretty eager to show you guys and uh, I have really been enjoying this one in the background so I'm just gonna hit the vol engine we're gonna launch into hyperspace and I will leave you with the outro but until next time I'm James from complete games and I'll see ya Earth, our home, she is unique. Held in its bosom are the ingredients of evolution. Beyond raw survival, beyond the safety of comfort, we, humanity, pursue something greater. We have learnt, persevered, 
shaped our knowledge from that which is found in the furthest realms of science. However, humanity has brought destruction to the earth, polluted its blood, choked its breath. Today we are paying the price for this. We know the taste of a dying world. But the earth is not to be our grave. A mother does not wish to see her children disappear with her. She wishes to see instead courage in her children to carry on. Dolos carries this courage. We have gone further than any nation, moved faster than any corporation, hand in hand with those who, like us, carry that courage. The Tycoon Station is both an epilogue of these endeavors and a prologue to humanity's next steps. Our Council of Scientists leads the vanguard. They know, as do we all, that the survival of humanity now depends on what we glimpse out there in the dark. That we are masters of our own destiny. That we must go as a species bound together, pushing further into the unknown. We set sail on this new sea because there is hope to be found, horizons to explore, and because our very existence depends on it. I give you the stars. I give you the full engine.